Gen Ichimaru is the silver-haired, blue-eyed snake in the grass. He is considered to be mysterious and untrustworthy. His motives are largely unknown for the majority of his appearances in the series. In this video, I want to reveal the mystery behind his sinister smile along with understanding his true motives and purpose for defecting from the Soul Society and joining Aizen as his closest ally. Why did Gin betray everyone? What was the purpose behind his actions? Let's analyse his character to understand the sacrifices that he makes and the reason behind why he acts the way he does in the series. Gin first appears in chapter 65 and in episode 20 of the anime. He is condescending and often resorts to sarcasm to intimidate others. This causes him to be difficult to read and understand. It also results in others around him feeling uncomfortable through the way that he mocks others while smiling and appearing well-mannered. Prior to his betrayal, he was still not trusted by others within the Gotai 13. He is fully aware of how he makes others feel, often enjoying putting others through discomfort as seen in chapter 145 when he toys with Rukia. He appears before Rukia while she is being escorted to her execution, portraying the extent of his twisted mentality. Gen gives Rukia hope by offering to help her stop the execution from going ahead. He gives her hope just as she has accepted her fate, but he reveals that he was lying and didn't really intend on helping her. It is a cruel, purposeful act which demonstrates how evil he was prior to his betrayal. In one of his early appearances in chapter 75, he greets Ichigo and company as they arrive at the gates of the Serite during the Soul Society arc. The gatekeeper Jidambo decides to lift the gate to allow the intruders to enter. As the gate is opened, Ichigo sees Gin on the other side of the gate as though he was expecting them this whole time. Convenient appearances like this draw suspicion towards his character and serve as the basis for questioning his every action going into the Soul Society arc. Gin defeats Jidambo and releases his spiritual pressure to prevent Ichigo and the others from entering into the Serite. He merely deters them instead of killing them, which is what he should have done. He once again acts purposefully and spares them as though he knows that they will find another way to get into the Serite. Prior to Aizen becoming the main antagonist of the series, we were led to believe that he was killed by Gin during the Soul Society arc. His evil wide smile and the way that he was written to be consistently unpredictable and hard to read made it a plausible theory to assume that he did indeed kill Aizen. To understand Gin, we need to look into his past. The reasoning behind his actions are explained during a couple of flashbacks which involve Gin and Rangiku. They explain the reason behind his betrayal of the Soul Society and his subsequent loyalty to Aizen, which spanned over 100 years. During his childhood, Gin lived within the Rukongai district. We learn in chapter 129 that Gin first met Rangiku who was collapsed and drained of her spiritual pressure. He offers her food to replenish her spiritual energy and the two of them become acquainted. We learn from a data book called Bleach Official Bootleg Karaburi Plus, which focuses on the Gotai 13, that Gin and Rangiku started living together after their first meeting. Their relationship is further expanded upon in chapter 415, which shows us a young Gin collecting wooden branches from the forest when he sees three Shinigami kneeling before a young Sosuke Aizen. We can assume that this flashback occurs while Gin and Rangiku were already living together. Gin sees the three Shinigami hand over an orb to Aizen. He then recalls that they were the same three Shinigami he spotted near to where he first found Rangiku, drained of her spiritual energy. He realises that Aizen is their leader and he had instructed them to use the Hokyoku to collect the energy from the citizens of Rukongai. From this single observation, he resolves to kill Aizen, like a snake peering at its prey through the bushes, he sets his sights on Aizen and patiently waits to strike him at the most opportune moment when he least expects it. Rangiku tells us in chapter 133 that Gin had a bad habit of disappearing without telling her where he was going when they were younger. This habit hadn't changed despite him now becoming a captain. Chapter 416 shows us one such occasion where Gin had wandered out without telling her where he was going. She followed his footsteps in the snow to find Gin wearing a Shinigami robe with blood on his face. He turns around to tell her that he has decided to become a Shinigami so that he may change things. He is driven by his desire to no longer see Rangiku cry, as she is one of the very few people that he truly cares about. They both entered into the academy together and trained to become Shinigami. Gin had graduated only a year after being admitted to the academy due to being a prodigy. He was assigned a position within the 5th division, of which Aizen was the lieutenant. The rest of Gin's past is shown to us during the Turn Back the Pendulum and Everything But the Rain flashback arcs. During the 4th chapter of the Turn Back the Pendulum arc, his desire to remain close to Aizen results in him killing the Shinigami holding the third seated position within Squad 5. Aizen witnesses this and is impressed by the young Gin, choosing to offer Gin the third seated position, while also willing to cover up that he killed the Shinigami. Nine years after the beginning of the Turn Back the Pendulum arc, we see Gin 
aiding Aizen in his holification experiments, appearing to have no issue with watching citizens of Rukongai undergoing forced holification. This, including him killing the third seated position of Squad 5, is the beginning of Gin actively partaking in evil acts and tarnishing his own morality for the sake of gaining Aizen's trust. The young Gin appears alongside Aizen during the holification incident, which was such an impactful event that it resulted in several members of the Gotai 13 becoming Vizards, who were consequently exiled from the Soul Society. Gin is seen often with his eyes squinting, along with a sinister smile, which evokes feelings of unease and discomfort. It is difficult to interpret Gin with any ulterior motives, as he is a very convincing right-hand man to Aizen's plans. When Urahara and Tessai arrive to help their comrades, Gin is not surprised by their arrival and appears to have been anticipating them. After the turn back the pendulum arc, we see Gin in the Everything But The Rain flashback, which spans from chapters 528 to 537. During this flashback, we see Gin who is now older and appears to have become the captain of Squad 3. Despite having become a captain, he was still a reliable subordinate of Aizen's, following his every command. During this time, Gin was helping Aizen to locate the whereabouts of the Vizards, while also continuing their holification experiments. Gin observes Ishin battling with the hollow called White that Aizen had created. He comments on how Ishin's surprise involvement could disrupt their plans. When Aizen, Tozen and Gin arrive on the battlefield cloaked and concealed for a closer view of the battle between Ishin and White, Aizen attacks Ishin from behind. Gin notices that Ishin has knowledge of another enemy on the battlefield. Gin tells Aizen that Ishin is aware that someone other than the Hollow has just attacked him, questioning if it is safe to just leave him while he has knowledge of this, but Aizen dismisses Gin's concerns. Chronologically, before his first appearance in the series, he already aided in horrific acts and in hindsight looking back at these events shows us how much he devoted himself to his desire for revenge. He did all of this just so that he could protect Rangiku's smile, despite now knowing that he had good intentions all along. It does help us to understand him but it does not alleviate the air of mystery and discomfort that he brought about whenever he would make an appearance throughout the series. This is especially shown through how Gin enjoys making others feel uneasy and fearful of his presence. Now that we know about Gin's backstory and his motive for action, we can now analyse the additional information that Kubo provides about Gin through the poems he writes for him, as well as explaining the meaning behind the names of his abilities on Zanbakdo. Gin Ichimaru is featured on the cover of two Bleach volumes, volume 20 and 47. At the beginning of these two volumes, there are two poems written about his character, which aid in our understanding of his mysterious nature. The poem in volume 20 speaks about the beauty and ugliness of love. Those who do not know what love is liken it to beauty. Those who claim to know what love is liken it to ugliness. Interpreting this poem from the perspective of Gin's character, we can assume that the poem is referencing the relationship between Gin and Rangiku. The first half of the poem speaks about people who seek love, purely through an idealistic perspective, while love is painless and beautiful. The first half is for those who have never experienced love, but simply desire to experience it. The second half elaborates upon the first by describing the perspective of those who have experienced love, and have a better understanding of it than the idealistic dreamers do. Those who have experienced love liken it to ugliness. This is in reference to the lengths that someone would go to for the sake of their love. Applying this interpretation to Gin's character, we can understand that he has forsaken his morals, his humanity and his beauty, all for his feelings of love. This poem features at an early point in the series, and we can see that it hints at Gin's toxic desire for revenge, and his love for Rangiku. How something as pure as love can fuel his actions and result in him aiding Aizen. Through following his orders, Gin appears as an ugly villainous traitor to us, the reader, and the characters in the series who are oblivious to his true intentions. This is what makes his character feel so well written. There are hints dotted in the series regarding his relationship and past with Rangiku, and we only really have the veil lifted about his true intentions in chapter 414. It is very subtle and the whole love aspect doesn't feel overbearing. It is subtly stated and allows for a great motive behind his desire for revenge. Kubo once again allows us to read between the lines and piece together a deeper understanding of his characters through the nuances that he writes into his manga. The poem in volume 47 describes the dilemma that Gin faces. If you became a snake tomorrow, and began devouring people. If you roared your love for me with that mouth that you used to devour people, could I still say that I love you as I do today? This poem symbolises Gin having come to the end of his journey, looking into a mirror facing his own reflection, as he questions himself. He does this through questioning what if the roles were reversed and Rangiku had become the snake that devoured people, yet with that same mouth she proclaimed her love for him. Would he be able
able to say that he loves her too after realizing all of the wrong that she has done. Through Gin trying to see things from Rangiku's perspective, he is questioning if everything he has done for the sake of his love for her has been worth it. The price he has had to pay to protect her smile and ensure she would not cry anymore, was it all worthwhile? Gin is wondering if he could still say that he loves her and be accepted by her after betraying the Soul Society, being involved in killing innocent people and helping Aizen. This poem explores the predicament that Gin has created for himself, as he puts herself in her shoes and wonders if he would be able to love Rangiku if she did wrong for his sake. He tries to understand her feelings for him after having come so far. Volume 47 features Gin's reunion with Rangiku, which I want to explore in the hopes that it sheds more light upon the dynamics of their relationship. Prior to leaving the Soul Society, Gin, Tozen and Aizen were surrounded by the Gotai 13. Rangiku had grabbed Gin, holding him captive to prevent him from getting away. The three defectors managed to escape, but before Gin leaves, he tells Rangiku that he would have liked to have been held captive by her a little while longer. He apologizes to her. This occurs in chapter 178. She is properly reunited with Gin in chapter 411, as she arrives to stop Aizen and Gin who are in the real Karakura town. In the next chapter, 412, we see Gin ensuring Aizen that he will get rid of his old friend Rangiku. Aizen says that they have plenty of time and allows him to catch up with her. Gin insists that she is in the way, but Aizen replies not at all. This subtle exchange reveals how aware Aizen is of Gin's relationship with Rangiku, and how Gin tries to dismiss these assumptions by displaying loyalty to Aizen, by taking out Rangiku. Gin grabs her and gets her out of Aizen's sight just as he said. She is clearly agitated and understandably mad at him. She does not want him to touch her, as she demands that he lets her go. Rangiku reveals that she waited for him to arrive in the real Karakura town, despite barely being able to stand. Gin asks her why she would do that while barely having any strength. She states it was because she knew that he would be here. Her desire is to confront Gin in order to ask him face to face what made him serve under Aizen. Was the reason worth betraying everybody, including his lieutenant, Izuru Kira, who trusted him completely? Gin asks her if she is certain if Kira indeed completely trusted him and was betrayed by him, or perhaps was it someone else? He is referring to Rangiku, who indeed is the one who completely trusted Gin and felt betrayed by his actions the most. He comes closer to her and asks her why did she have to come. He draws his blade to her and calls her a nuisance, as it appears that he has taken her out. We see Rangiku collapse on the ground as Gin leaves her, heading back to Aizen. When he returns to Aizen, he is asked what he did with her, to which he replies that he killed her. Aizen confirms that her spiritual energy is no longer present. He expresses his surprise as he assumed that Gin would have shown her mercy. This shows that Aizen was well aware of his feelings for her and how she may be a weakness to Gin. However, he dismisses these notions as he reminds Aizen about the first time that they met, how he referred to himself as a snake. This moment is important to understand Gin, as he describes his own character better than anyone else could. He states that his skin is cold, he has no heart, he slithers looking for prey with the tip of his tongue, swallowing people that he cares about whole. He likens himself to a snake, because that is the kind of creature that he is, totally detaching himself from the notion of mercy that Aizen tried to label him with. Aizen says that he is ready to leave and desires to kill and hang the bodies of Ichigo's friends somewhere visible for everyone to see. Moments after reminding, or should I say warning Aizen about his true nature, he catches him off guard and pierces him through his chest with his zanpakuto. Gin reveals that he knows how to escape Kyokasugetsu's power. He does so by touching Aizen's zanpakuto in its unreleased state. He waited for decades to learn how to escape the hypnotic effects of Kyokasugetsu, just so that he could exploit this weakness at the most opportune time. Nobody within the Gotai 13 knows about this. He states that despite not knowing the weakness to Aizen's zanpakuto, it was interesting watching the Gotai 13 try to defeat Aizen. Aizen, trying to remain composed, reveals that he was expecting Gin to betray him, but was curious as to how he would try to take his life. Gin leaves a fragment of his Zanpakuto within Aizen's chest, and it is here that we learn about the true nature of Gin's Zanpakuto. It does extend, but upon expanding or contracting, it disintegrates, and within the blade is a deadly poison that has the ability to dissolve cells. Similar to the fangs of a snake, his Zanpakuto is his fang that he uses to deliver his venom. The fragment that Gin left within Aizen is inside his heart. He advises him to say his last words quickly as he is about to die soon. Gin activates his Bankai and uses his ability called Kill Kamishini no Yari, which translates to Kill God Killing Spear. This is significant as it shows that Gin was destined to kill Aizen, who strived to achieve a godly status. Gin Zanbakdo is also called Shinso, which translates to God Spear. The name of his Bankai matches with his true intentions. For those willing to look closely into the words that the characters speak, the names of their abilities, and Zanbakdo, as it reveals hints that have been there from the very beginning, pointing to events like Gin's attempt to take Aizen's life. The God Killing Spear was indeed used against a god, as Gin tells him that he will finally be able to die now with a hole in his chest, saying that this should make him feel happy. The hole in his chest is in 
reference to his obsession with merging Hollow and Shinigami powers. So Aizen, who is a Shinigami now with a hollow hole in his chest, is an ironic visual representation of that which he seeked. Gin retrieves the Hokyoku from Aizen, who seems to have been killed, as his body breaks down to a cellular level. However, Aizen survives the attack, and despite taking the Hokyoku, it belongs to Aizen and ends up returning to him, as he confronts Gin and cuts him down. You can see the anguish in Gin's eyes as everything he sacrificed and lived for fades to nothing. His efforts amounted to nothing. Gin tries reaching for the Hokyoku in a final futile attempt to stop Aizen, but he grabs his wrist and rips his arm off. He then impales him through the chest before throwing his body into a nearby building. Gin recalls back to the moment that he promised Rangiku that he would become a Shinigami so that he may change things, so that she won't have to cry anymore. It is incredibly emotional to see Gin defeated and on the brink of death as we finally understand his motives, realizing just how misunderstood he was up until this point. Rangiku awakens to sense that Gin has been attacked by Aizen. We learn that he used a Kido spell called Hakufuku on Rangiku, which confuses and disorientates its target, resulting in them falling unconscious, explaining how he non-lethally subdued Rangiku before he returned to Aizen. She rushes to Gin. When he sees her, he feels regret that he could not return to her that which was taken from her. He does, however, feel relief knowing that he had the chance to apologize to her. Gin sacrificed everything till the very end. He made himself appear as a monster to everyone, including the one that he loved the most. His encounter with Rangiku before he attempts to kill Aizen answers the poem from volume 47. He realizes that Rangiku would not be able to accept a snake who devoured others with the same mouth that he declares his love for her. The question posed from the poem is answered through his realization that she would not be able to say that she loves him in return after everything he has done. She is crying while holding him in her arms, revealing to us how deep of a bond the two of them shared, and how tragic it was that he dedicated so much of his time for her happiness in order to prevent her from crying, just to see tears in her eyes as he is about to die. Through his dedication, he proved that he would have done anything for her, even compromising his sense of right and wrong. He is a complex character who really gave us a lot to think about through how he spoke and acted, convincing us of his sinister nature when in fact his intentions were good, and resulted in him dying for the sake of these intentions. In his final moments, he looks at Dangai Ichigo and sees the difference in the expression of his eyes. He no longer sees feelings of anxiousness, doubt, and fear reflected in his eyes. They appear stern and fixated. He describes them as being stronger. Upon seeing this, he feels relief knowing that he can leave the rest to Ichigo now. During the battle in Fake Karakura Town in chapter 398, Ichigo attacks Gin from behind. As they battle together for the first time since Gin first appeared and cut off Jidambo's arm back in the Soul Society arc, the two of them battle each other and exchange words, which help to shed some light on Ichigo's understanding of Gin as a character, and what Gin perceived about Ichigo also. Ichigo reveals that during battle, he understands his opponents through the crossing of their blades, further describing that he can sense why the person is fighting, or whether if his opponent is looking down on him or not. He says that he was not able to sense this from Gin, because during their last encounter, Gin was not looking at Ichigo. They begin to battle as Gin describes Ichigo as a creepy kid, and understands why Aizen appears to be interested in him. This entire battle feels like Gin testing Ichigo out, assessing his strength and his mental fortitude. Chapter 404, Gin takes a break from fighting to talk to Ichigo. He states that it is inevitable that he and his friends are going to die now that Aizen has absorbed the Hokyoku. He can feel Ichigo's resolve being shaken as he manages to catch Ichigo's slip and indirectly admit that he will be defeated. This further wavers Ichigo's resolve. He continues to tell Ichigo that he is weak and wonders if he was always like this, as he tells him that he was scarier back when they first clashed their Zanbakuto in the Soul Society arc. He advises Ichigo to just run away as he is disappointed by his lack of resolve. Gin continues to ridicule Ichigo and makes him come to realize how futile his efforts really are. He mentally breaks him here as he says that he is not a warrior, not a soul reaper, not a hollow, and not even a human. He questions if he can beat Aizen who is too much for Yoriichi, Ishin, and Urahara. Can he really match their level of skill against an opponent as strong as Aizen? He doubts that Ichigo would be a worthy opponent, especially in the state that he is in now. He tells him to run away once more and that he isn't interested in him anymore. Even Aizen would be disappointed to see him like this. He tells Ichigo that he knows he is scared because Ichigo can sense Aizen's true power and how impossible it is to even fathom to defeat him. We see Ichigo utterly succumb to Gin's onslaught of words, which cause Ichigo to feel hopelessness, as he appears to be in anguish. This situation explains why Gin is so relieved later when he sees Dangai Ichigo, as the whole purpose of this encounter was to help Ichigo to come to terms with his fears, and to realize the difference in his power compared to Aizen's. Sure enough, Gin did plan to kill Aizen, but knowing that Ichigo was broken in the hopes that he would rebuild himself to be stronger was a great backup plan, which proved to work. As Ichigo returns with stronger, more determined eyes, far removed from the fear-induced doubtful 
eyes Gin had seen before. While analysing Gin's character, it is difficult not to mention the parallels that he shares with another silverhead captain of the Gotai 13. Yes, I'm talking about Toshiro Hitsugaya. Both of them were gifted youths, considered to be prodigies for their ages. Hitsugaya especially, as he was the youngest Shinigami to become a captain throughout the whole history of the Gotai 13. As well as this, Aizen was involved closely with the two of them. In regards to how he manipulated Rangiku, who Gin was close to, and Momo, who Hitsugaya had grown up with. Through Aizen harming and manipulating them, it causes Gin and Hitsugaya to share a common desire to kill Aizen. However, the two of them fail at this task. Their similarities, however, do end here, as the two of them take totally different approaches to enact their desire for revenge against Aizen. For Gin, wanting to kill Aizen came before everything else in his life. His desire for revenge was placed above his love for Rangiku, his honour as a Shinigami, and his sense of humanity. However, Hitsugaya did not neglect his bond with Momo. He openly expressed his concern for her, and remained within the Gotai 13 honouring his commitment as a captain, and did not commit any atrocious acts like Gin. During the battle in Fate Karakura Town, Hitsugaya had his opportunity to take out Aizen, but failed. Gin observed this and later tried to exact his revenge through his own way, which too failed. After Gin had revealed his true intentions, his character arc was completed. His purpose was fulfilled upon saying kill Kamishini no Yari, which just so happens to be one of my favourite lines within Bleach. It is symbolic of the moment that Gin was able to get payback for what Aizen did to the one he loved. How he enjoyed being loyal for over 100 years to the one who hurt Rangiku. The patience, self-restraint and the sacrifices that he made for his purpose resulted in being one of the most selfless yet selfish characters within Bleach. Selflessly, he wanted Rangiku to no longer cry, while selfishly allowing himself to be absorbed in revenge, to bring about his selfless desire. The mystery and complexity behind his character is the reason why Gin is still remembered to this day as one of the best characters to feature within Bleach. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, then please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. I have multiple tiers with rewards including access to an exclusive Discord server, video scripts, as well as being the first to know about unreleased upcoming videos. Thank you for your time and whatever you choose to contribute, I will appreciate and it will mean a lot to me.